So you've decided to get into elk calling. You went to your local sporting goods store, you walked in and you were met with this huge wall of calls. Where do you begin? How do you choose the right diaphragm? Which brand is the best? In this video, we're gonna get you started right here, right now. Hey everybody, Michael Batiste from the Elk Calling Academy, where we give you your blueprint for success in the elk woods. On this channel, we do elk call reviews, gear reviews, elk calling lessons, tips, and tutorials just like this one. Welcome to the Beginner's Guide to Elk Calling, Chapter 1, Diaphragms. In this video, we're going to talk about the different types of diaphragms and how to choose the right diaphragm for you when you're starting out in elk calling. We've all been there. We've decided, okay, we want to start out calling. So we go to our local sporting goods store and there's just such a huge selection. It's really intimidating. How do we narrow that down? How do we know what's really going to work for us? You know, we can certainly call our, our elk hunting friends and elk caller friends and kind of get recommendations from them. But the one thing to remember is the roof of our mouths, the palate, is different for everybody. How it's shaped, how tall it is. Because of those differences, what works for your buddies may not work for you. Now, the interesting thing about this too is this applies in families as well. I remember a few years back I was doing a sports show in Salt Lake and a father and son came up and they wanted to get some diaphragm reads. We got the dad fitted and he's like, okay, I'll take 12 of those and 12 of those. Well, the hard part was is he and his son had different size palettes. In fact, the dad had a narrow size palette and the son had a regular size. So what are the different choices and diaphragm reads available on the market today? Well, first, let's kind of go through a progression of how diaphragm reads for elk calling kind of developed and how they evolved over time. Early on in elk calling, it started off with basically guys taking turkey reeds and wanting to emulate the elk and produce those cow sounds and bull sounds. But the turkey reeds just weren't cut out for the So guys started making their reeds off of the traditional or conventional platform, which is just a standard horseshoe. It's open on both sides. Now the conventional diaphragm is designed to go all the way back in your mouth. The only drawback with that is as we start to move back on the roof of our mouth, the palate gets softer and softer. For a lot of people, as soon as they take a conventional diaphragm and put it on the soft portion of their palate, they immediately start gagging. They want to spit it out. The other thing that's tricky about conventional diaphragms, since there is no reference point to know which is the top or which is the bottom, the one indication is there is typically a little tab on the diaphragm reads. You'll have to read the packaging of the manufacturer to see if they build theirs tab up or tab down. Most of the manufacturers out there build their calls tab down. Now, since a lot of people suffered from the gag reflex, the raised angle palate plate was invented and designed. The raised angle palate plate has a raised plate that's built into the frame. Now what this does is this actually sets the angle of the frame in the roof of your mouth because this is in contact with the roof. The other nice thing about raised angle palate plates is they're designed to go more forward in your mouth where you have part of your hard palate and that eliminates the gag reflex. Next up, diaphragms evolved into the dome style reed, which have a dome built into the frame instead of that raised angle palate or that plate. The reason for the invention of the domed reeds is a lot of people have a very high arch to their palates where the raised angle palate plate with that simple raised plate on it won't fit up into the roof of their mouth. They get a lot of play in it. That's where the dome style comes in. The dome style is built for collars or for people that have that high arch to the front of their palate. Most recently, 
modified domed reeds or mo modified pallet reeds came on the market. If you notice, they have the front portion, but there's nothing on the back. It's almost like you're taking a domed reed and a conventional reed and combining them together. Now, the thing with the modified diaphragm, it is designed to go kind of in the mid portion of your mouth where it's still hitting a little bit of the hard palate, but getting back more towards where the conventional diaphragm should go. Even though the conventional diaphragms are designed to go towards the back portion of your palate and the raised angle palate plate or dome reeds are designed to go farther forward, really the best for you is to find the best fit in your palate. You may have to move that reed back towards the back or more towards the front to find where it really sits the best. But the most critical portion of choosing the right diaphragm is choosing the right frame size. Diaphragms come in three sizes. There are narrow frames, medium frames, and wide frames. Why three different sizes? Easy because everybody's mouth is different. Some people have narrow palates, some people have wide palates, and some people just have that normal, uh, regular palate. That's why the three different sizes. Now, what the frame is, is the frame is the metal horseshoe. Now, the horseshoe on diaphragm reeds can either be made out of metal or plastic. The advantage to metal is they're a little bit more rigid. You can actually bend them and mold them to fit to your mouth. Plastic frames, they will bend on their own to fit your mouth, where you, but as soon as you change or take them out, a lot of times they'll go back flat. So metal frames, you can actually tune them and fit them to your mouth. Now. When we talk about fitting the diaphragm to the roof of your mouth, what we're really talking about is the frame itself. I've had a few students at the Elk Calling Academy. They said they were struggling trying to find a diaphragm because they were trying to fit the frame and the tape both up into the palate of their mouth. That's not what we want. And in fact, we want the widest frame that we can fit up. Now, if the tape bends down, imagine my fingers are my teeth and this frame is sitting up in the palate of, of my mouth and the tape is kind of bent down resting on those inside of my upper teeth. That's perfectly fine. In fact, that's going to help you get a good seal, which then you can really focus and channel that air over the latex. Now let's talk about latex for a minute because there's a lot of options. There's singles, doubles, triples, one and a half, two and a half. What do those mean? What do those reference? Basically, those are reference the number of layers of latex that is within that reed. So a single reed is a single layer of latex. A double is two layers, triple is three layers. Same thing with the one and a half and two and a half. That's just one and a half layers of latex, two and a half layers of latex. The latex is the portion within the frame. The latex is what gets us our sound. As we apply pressure with our tongue and air pressure, that latex will give us higher pressure or higher pitches the more pressure that we put on that latex. So more pressure, higher pitch, less pressure, lower pitch. So what's the best for beginners? Typically for beginners, I recommend a single reed, just a single layer of latex, kind of with a medium to light stretch. The reason is in that medium and light stretch is you get good response. It doesn't take a lot of tongue pressure and it doesn't take a lot of air pressure, so you can start getting sounds right off the get-go. So if you're new to using a diaphragm, I'm going to guarantee that as soon as you stick the reed in your mouth, your mouth is really, really going to salivate. It's really going to produce a lot of saliva. This does go away after time. The more you practice on the diaphragm and the more you use it, the less saliva your mouth is going to produce. One way that you can kind of combat this at the beginning is get used to have the diaphragm in your mouth. Don't even try to make sounds. Just put the diaphragm in your mouth. You can put it right on the side in your cheek or, you know, 
move it from your cheek up to the roof of your mouth and back and forth. Just have it in your mouth for a while. Get used to it before you kind of really start making sounds. So how do you determine what size frame you need? Because the frames, small, medium, or narrow on the metal horseshoe are just like buying a shirt. If you typically wear a medium shirt, you're not going to go into the store and go to the large rack or the small rack to buy a shirt. You're gonna buy that medium. Now there's a couple of ways that you can figure out what size diaphragm read you need. With the new year coming upon us, that means that smart sports shows are going to get cranked up and a lot of these sports shows call manufacturers will get there and be there. If you're not too shy about it, go ahead and go up and ask them to take a look at the roof of your mouth. These manufacturers will be able to look up there and they'll be able to make recommendations and tell you, you know, you've got a narrow frame or you've got a narrow palette, you need a narrow frame or, you know, you could go with a medium or a wide. They'll get you started in the right direction. From there, then you can start asking questions. I'm a beginner. What read do you recommend? Now, if you're not comfortable going up and asking these questions at sports shows or even at your local archery shop, you do have a couple of options. Option one is you can go online to the websites of these call manufacturers and basically send them an email and say, hey, I'm a brand new caller. I've never used a diaphragm read before. What do you recommend? These manufacturers are there to help you. Now, the other thing that I recommend, there's a lot of call manufacturers out there. Rocky Mounting Hunting Supplies and Calls, Phelps Game Calls, uh, Shield Mountain Outdoors, um, Mile High Note Game Calls, Smith Game Calls, Native by Carlton. There's a lot of choices. And each call manufacturer, even though they get the latex from the same place, how they build their calls are a little bit different. What I mean by each manufacturer building their reads differently is basically all, all manufacturers get their latex from the same place, from the same distributor. So they're all kind of on the level playing field with the latex. Where the differences come in is each manufacturer builds their diaphragms a little bit different. And what I mean by that is there's different thicknesses of latex and then you can put different stretches on those. So there is a ton of different options that can be made with thicknesses of latex and stretches. By you contacting the customer support for each of these companies and saying, hey, I'm new, what do you recommend? They will be sure to steer you into a diaphragm that is really built for beginners because each manufacturer builds calls for different levels of callers. They all know there's beginners, there's intermediates, there's advanced callers. You know, they can even get specialty diaphragms that are focused on cow sounds or one that's focused on bull sounds only or an all around call that you can do both cow vocalizations and bull vocalizations. But since you're just starting out, I recommend a single latex that's typically designed just for cow sounds. Now, even though the reed is designed just for cow sounds, that doesn't mean that you can't bugle on it. You might have a hard time at it, but I've seen some beginners excel really, really well at those really light latexes as they're learning the tongue and air pressure. In chapter two, we'll go into how to position the diaphragm in the roof of our mouth, how to tongue contacts it, air pressure and everything. So right now in this one, we just wanna focus on choosing the right diaphragm. A couple of other options that you can do for starting out or choosing a diaphragm is there's a couple of manufacturers out there that make multi-packs, which means there's multiple reads in the pack. Within that multi-pack, you typically have a narrow frame, one or two medium frames, and a wide frame. So now you can get that multi-pack and play with the different reads to see how each one fits. So another option that you can do is just get a single read to start with. I recommend getting a medium framed read. So when you're contacting these manufacturers, ask them if they manufacture medium framed reads. What you'll do with that medium frame is as soon as you put it up in the palate of your mouth and you move it kind of forward and back and get it seated well, pay attention to how it fits. If it fits good, if it feels good, then you're a medium frame. If it feels 
big, then you probably need to switch down to the narrow frame and vice versa. If that medium feels small, then you need to switch to a wide frame. Now remember, as we mentioned earlier, the fit up there we're talking about is just the horseshoe of the frame. That's what we want to fit up into the palette. Now, as we go back in the roof of our mouth, we do actually get wider. That's why most conventional reeds are built on a medium or a wide frame because they're designed to go back there farther. So you have your reed selected and you're starting to blow on it and you're starting to get sounds. How do you know if it's the right fit? One really big indication is if you're making sounds and you hear a lot of air escaping, that's typically meaning that you don't have a good seal. Now that could be one of two things. It could be one, you have the reed too far forward and you need to move it back a little bit, or two, you have the wrong size frame. If you have the right size frame and the right fit, you will get a good seal on the top of your mouth on that palate, and the air is then only allowed to escape between your tongue and that latex. And like I said, in chapter two, we'll go over that a little bit more. Another way to tell that you have the right size diaphragm is the good fit, and also it's a good fit for you because your calling is effortless. You don't really have to work at it. You don't have to force anything. It just flows naturally. Now, some of the reeds out there, you may be able to cow call only on, and some you may be only to bugle on, where others you can do both. Once you've locked it down on the size of frame you need, now you can really start playing with the singles and the doubles and the one and a halves. Me personally, I am a fan of a 1.5 or a one and a half reed, which means it has a full layer of latex on the bottom with a half latex on the, on the top. For me, that is the best type of reed built on a wide frame. For me, that's the easiest to use, but that's not meaning that's, that's going to be the best read for you or the best fit for you. Now, once you have that good fit, here's an example of what I mean that calling is just easy and effortless. So hopefully that kind of narrows it down a little bit and kind of points you into the right direction of starting to make the right choice for you as a beginner. Now for you intermediates that have been using reeds for a little bit and you're still struggling with it, you might want to consider using a different reed. The other thing that I recommend to a lot of our Elk Calling Academy students is get reeds from different manufacturers. Don't get stuck in just a rut that you just really, really try to force yourself to make that reed work. It should be the other way around. If you choose the right diaphragm, that reed is going to work for you. If you still have questions, you're still unsure of what reed might work best for you, as I said, you have a couple of options. One is you can contact the different manufacturers and ask some questions. Or two, you can contact me directly. You can send me messages over on our Facebook page, which is just Elk Calling Academy, or YouTube messages, Instagram messages. You know, we're on all these different platforms and pretty easy to get a hold of. We're here to help all of you guys, and we're really here to, as I said, give you the blueprint for your success in the elk woods. And basically it all starts with the foundation of choosing the right diaphragm read. As always guys, thank you for watching and thank you for your support. And we look forward to talking to you in chapter two of the Beginner's Guide to Elk Calling. Talk to you soon.